in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is good to be with you once again. And until that time when we can gather physically together here in this sanctuary and uh, other churches around our community, we will continue to bring you a message of hope, uh, a message that will encourage and a word from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives to us all glory and honor and praise to be able to offer his word. Because for us who are ministers, uh, we can praise him and we can glory in the fact that the Holy Spirit is speaking through us. And today's message, I want to speak about uh, us being shut in and about the uh, events as uh, they seem to be unfolding. And in the uh, book of Exodus, uh, Moses writes to us about one of the plagues that was coming upon Egypt. It was the final plague. The one where Pharaoh would finally give in and acknowledge that he was not God, but that, the, that God himself was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And in that uh, plague, before it came about, God told Moses to tell his people to get a lamb. Uh, to slay that lamb and to take the blood of that lamb and put it on the doorposts and the lintels of their homes. And this is what he says. He says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. And he is telling the people, as they are shut in their homes, that it is through the blood of the Lamb that their salvation will come. That the angel of death will pass over their homes, that it will not touch them, that they will not be susceptible to it. And it's not so very different than it is here. For it is the blood of the Lamb of God that shelters us. It is the blood of the Lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ. Worthy is the Lamb of God who is giving to us hope and encouragement. And there were other times in the Bible when God told his people to take shelter. In Isaiah 26, 20, he speaks to the people once again, and he says, Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment, a season, until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth, for their iniquity, the earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. Again, he is telling his people, the remnant, the faithful ones, go into your chambers, go into your homes, and there you will be protected from the wrath of God. You know, throughout all of Scripture, God's protection for his people is against the evil that comes before God. The evil of the world, the evil of the things. And though God may not have sent this plague upon us, this virus, he is allowing it, but he can use it for his glory. For he can use it to bring people to salvation. That for the first time in a long time, that people will cry out to God and say, Oh Lord, protect me, watch over me. Watch over my loved ones and my family. If you recall just 19 years ago, September 11th, 2001, the towers in New York City fell, attacked, and people flocked into the sanctuaries, and the sanctuaries were full for about a month. But as things returned to normal, people once again began falling away falling away from the faith, falling away from God, but there for a short time when disaster was up on them, they called upon the name of the Lord and God touched them and blessed them and many came to salvation. God can use all of these things to touch his people, to comfort them, to bring them peace, those who know him, but also 
to lead those who are astray, those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, to lead them to salvation. For God has always worked with his people. We recall in the Bible where we read about Moses when he was born, and it was at that time that the Pharaoh had decreed that all of the male children of the Israelites should be slain and die. But by a miracle of the hand of God, Moses was spared. And God used him to set his people free. Before the blessings of God, evil often occurs. Because the evil one in the world, the ruler of this age, Satan himself, tries to disquiet his people, tries to discourage them, tries to keep them from receiving the blessings of God. But the blessings came through, the people were released. And then when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, once again, evil reared its ugly head. And King Herod decreed that all of the male infants from two years and younger would be killed, hoping that he would kill and destroy the Lord Jesus Christ, an act of Satan, evil in the world. But once again, God protected his own, and Jesus was protected and became the savior of the world. The blessings that Moses brought to the Israelites, the blessings that we have received through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessings of God were not stopped. And again, here in the 20th century that just passed, there are some who are still living that fought in that great war, the greatest generation. And Israel was to become a nation. But once again, evil reared its head. And Hitler and the Nazis decreed that all of the Jewish people would be destroyed, that he would wipe them from the face of the earth. And yet God watched over and protected, and Israel became a nation, and God's promise was kept from 2,000 years ago that they would rise up out of the dust, that the dry bones that we read about in Ezekiel would bear flesh and would once again live, and Israel has become a nation. You cannot stop our God. God has a purpose. God has a plan. And I don't know what that plan is, but I know that God can bring good to all of those who love him. That even in the face of this virus that so many are afraid of, that God can work a mighty and perfect deed. You know, I often say to you, God is able to work in us and through us and despite of us despite of our failings, despite of our misgivings, God, if we will allow him to say, Lord Jesus, use me, can do a mighty and perfect work. God has always watched over his people. Moses was spared. Jesus was protected. The Jewish people were kept safe. Though many died and many were slain during the time of Jesus' birth, and many died during the time of Moses' birth. God was still able to do a mighty and perfect work, and he is still in control of all of these things. The pattern is repeated again and again and again in Scripture, that before the blessings of God, the evil one will attack us. That before the blessings of God, the evil one will try to discourage us to distract us, to keep us from receiving that blessing. But I'm here to tell you today, stay the course. Pray to the Lord our God, and the chains will be broken, and the ban will be lifted, and this too shall pass. And I believe with every fiber of my being that the blessings of God will then be poured out upon his people and that we will gather again and rejoice and praise and worship him because he is the king of kings and the lord of lords and he has a plan and a purpose for all things do not be discouraged my children you are beloved of god you belong to him and he has a purpose a plan for all things you know i often think about 
how he feels about us. You know, I asked one time during message, what is something worth? You know, there's a baseball that is hit out of a stadium that is the home run record. It goes on auction and someone may pay three hundred or five hundred thousand for that. It's worth what they paid for it. Here just a few years ago, Bob Dylan, Robert Zimmerman was his real name, a Jewish man. He wrote a song and he took the lyrics of that song and he put them up for auction. And someone paid two million dollars for the lyrics of a song that Bob Dylan sat down and wrote and recorded. It was worth $2 million to that individual to have that song, to have those lyrics. So I ask you, what are you worth? What is your worth? So many people tell me, I don't feel worthy. I don't feel loved. And God tells us, he says, I do not love you because you're worthy. You're worthy because I love you. What are you worth? You are worth the blood and the death of his only son, Jesus Christ. That Jesus loved you so much that he was willing to come and lay down his life and die for you that you might be forgiven and be called a child of God. And so there is a virus that is threatening the land, that is threatening the world. But my God is bigger than that virus. My God has a plan and a purpose. Because my worth to him was the shedding of his blood. That Jesus came from heaven to become mortal, born as a babe in a manger. To grow up a child and taught in the temple to become a man. And he walked with us, and he laughed with us, and he wept with us. And he gave sight to the blind, and allowed the dumb to talk, the lame to walk, the lepers to be cleansed, and even raised the dead. You are worth his very life, and he was willing to lay it down for you. So throughout all of history, as we have seen people come against God and God's people, do, be not, do not be dismayed, for God is alive. We serve the risen Savior today. Jesus Christ has laid down a plan. And before he left, he said, upon this rock I will build my church, and against it, the gates of hell shall not prevail. This virus shall not prevail against us. Nothing that comes against us, no weapon formed against us will prosper. Follow the advice of the health leaders, our governors, our president, all of those who are in authority over us, for God has given them that authority. Follow their advice. Pray to God. Read your scripture and praise him and thank him that you are safe, that you are protected, that you are well, that you are called a child of God. As I offer you this word of hope this morning, I want you to understand God loves you. You are his very own. And if there is one that is watching here this morning, if there is one who is keeping track, who is following along with this, and you think, but I've never made that profession of faith. I've never received Jesus as my own. Now is the time that you can do it. It's a simple prayer, a prayer that's given in the Bible, that the publican came in to the temple and he beat upon his breast and he said, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. And God said, surely that publican will enter in because he has asked for forgiveness. All 
you have to do is call upon the name of Jesus. And whoever calls upon that name shall be saved. I hope you prayed that prayer if you do not know him. And for those of us who have followed him and been with him, rejoice in the fact that he is still on the throne, that he is still in control, that his protection is with you, and that he is watching over you. And as I mentioned last week, many of you have called, I've heard from messages on Facebook and others, how can I send my tithes into the church? Well, for the Aldersgate Church, send them to 186 High Ridge Street, Bristol, Tennessee, 37620, and at Anderson Street, 954 Anderson Street, Bristol, Tennessee, 37620. And until I can meet you again, until I can be with you, or until I speak to you on the phone, you can call me at any time and ask for prayer. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you and may his hand of protection watch over you as we offer to you his love and forgiveness at this time. Let us pray. Father God, there are times in this journey that we call life when we are uncertain about how things will transpire. We are uncertain about what tomorrow may hold or tomorrow may bring. But Jesus told us, do not be concerned for tomorrow, for each day is sufficient for its own cares. And so, Lord, as we come before you, we want to offer to you our praise and our worship. We want to tell you today, Lord, that we love you. You are our God. And we know that you are in control of all things and that you are working through this. Lord, more than anything, we want to be obedient to you, our Heavenly Father. But until that time, Lord, when we can gather as brothers and sisters in Christ, I pray that your hand of protection will be upon your children, upon my sisters and my brothers. I pray that once again we may gather in this sanctuary and be able to praise and honor and glorify your holy name. But I know, Lord, that this is just a building. It is the house of the Lord. But we are the church. We who are saved and baptized into the body of Christ. And so, Lord, I ask, watch over your children. Keep us safe. And until that time, may all honor, glory, and praise be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen.